Thank you, Father. Father, we come before you now with great anticipation and great thanks. Father, we come to you in a place of dependency because when we come to you, that's the only place we want to be is dependent upon you. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that tonight uh, no flesh will be glorified, that all things will be done by your spirit. We give you thanks and praise for that. Father, we declare that we are good ground, that the seed of your word will take root and bring forth fruit that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. We give you thanks. We give you praise for the revelation of your word tonight by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. Well, God bless you guys. You may be seated. Want to give honor to Dr. Dollar and Pastor Taffy. Amen. Amen. Yes. Rightfully so. They are, uh, as it mentions in the book of Revelation, they're like the angels of this church, and, and we thank God for them and all that they're doing and keeping us spiritually fed and fit. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, um, Let's go ahead on and let's get into this right away. And I started a series um, last week entitled Mastering Your Thought Life. Mastering Your Thought Life. And when we talk about our thinking or our thought life, it is paramount <clears throat> that we pay attention to this because if we don't get our thought life together, it's not to say that we won't go to heaven because Jesus took care of that part. But as far as down here on the earth, we can find ourselves living a defeated life and not a victorious life and, and a life that is uh, dominated and fought in the mind and we would be losing that battle and we don't need to lose that battle. And I believe, praise God, that we're we're doing, we're doing good, but I believe we can do better. One of the things that I've found out is that a lot of people know God, but they don't trust God. And let me clarify that even a little more. A lot of people know of God. <laughs> There's a difference in really knowing God and knowing of God. There are a lot of people that know of God, but they don't trust him. And I was sharing this one time before that when it comes to some of the saints, we find ourselves responding totally different, uh, differently when we are thrust into a situation. Now, it's one thing when you can see a situation coming and you prepare. You know, yeah, we, we prepare. We get ready. We see it coming. You know, you see the car in front of you, it stopped. You, it's far enough in front of you, you prepare by putting your brakes on and stopping. But now if you're tailgating, and then the car puts its brakes on where you hit because you didn't have time to react. Well, a lot of times in our lives, we find ourselves realizing what's actually on the inside of us when we run into that, that situation. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have time to prepare. You didn't have time to get your scriptures together or formulate your thoughts or your words and all that stuff. It just happened. And what comes out of you at that moment, at that time, all together now, is what's actually in you. And it tells, it, it tells the story. You know, I've, I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen Christians Stump that toe and it's, oh! It's like, whoa, you didn't have time to prepare because you weren't, you didn't know you were going to stump your toe at that time. So what came out was what was in you. So we've got to get our thought life so that once it gets in line, the body follows. If we can get this trained up here, the body will follow. So we call tonight's message, change your thoughts, change your life. Amen. Change your thoughts, change your life. <clears throat> now, 
throughout our lives, we're collecting thoughts through our life experiences. Throughout our lives, we are collecting thoughts throughout our life's experiences. We experience things that generates a thought, that generates a memory, that generates something that is logged in your mind, and you'll have that thought there. But it's something that is interesting that over the course of your life, and you are, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, Scientists say that generally we, our brain processes about 70,000 thoughts a day. 70,000 thoughts a day. You're not even conscious of your brain processing 70,000 thoughts a day. But chances are that's true because once you start thinking about it, and you start thinking about all the things that can go through your mind in a matter of a minute. You can think about, <clears throat> well, what am I going to wear tomorrow? Uh, then you break that down into not just what am I going to wear, but am I going to wear a suit or am I going to wear a, uh, you know, pants and slacks or am I going to wear this tie? What kind of tie am I going to wear? All of these are thoughts. What kind of tie am I going to wear? Mm, no, I think I'm just going to wear a button down and uh, be casual. Well, am I going to be casual with my, my, my black shoes or my brown shoes? Uh, you know what? It's all of his thoughts. So just in that one little conversation, I probably generated about 20, 30, 40, 50 thoughts just in that one little, little conversation. So our minds can really generate a lot of thoughts. The thing about it is is that, let's go to Psalms 139 and verse 14, and I just want to establish this because we have to understand that when God made us, uh, okay, I was wondering if we were going to have our scriptures tonight. All right. When God made us, Psalms uh, 139, Verse 14, he says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. God gave us the ability to think. God gave us this mind. This mind that God gave us can also not only think, but it can imagine. So when it imagines, from imagine, we get the word images. So as our brains are processing things, we're also creating pictures in our heads. Now, let me give you an example of that. And I want to show you this mind-body connection, how powerful it is, because as our mind goes, so goes really our body. As our mind goes, so goes our body. Now, let's, let's go to Proverbs 23, uh, verse 7, and then we'll, we'll give some examples here. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh, comma, in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. As you think, that's the way you are. When it comes to your soul, it is unlike your body. Your body is you are what you eat. How many of y'all remember hearing that? Yeah. You are what you eat. You eat a bunch of junk food, your body's going to show that you're eating a bunch of junk food. You eat a bunch of healthy food, your body's going to show that you're eating a bunch of healthy food. Whereas when it comes to your soul, you are what you think. So as you think, that is the way that your soul goes, and then it wants to trickle down into your spirit man. The ultimate objective is to, for it to trickle from your soul to your spirit man and then to try to dominate or depress or to try to cause your spirit man to be uh, in, a, in, a, in a position where it's weak and down. Now, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he, uh, he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As you think in your heart, so are you. When you change your thoughts, you can change your life. 
Now, Jesus was all about us really changing our mindset. And let me just run these scriptures by you so that you, you'll know as we continue to go, you'll have these as, as um, uh, foundation. Romans 12, 2. We all know that. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By renewing your mind or by changing your mind or changing your thoughts or changing the way that you think. Then he also tells us in Proverbs 16th chapter and the third verse, Proverbs 16, 3, commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts will be established. So God wants to establish our thoughts. Colossians, third chapter, second verse. God wants to establish our thoughts, but he tells us if we commit our works unto him, he will establish your thoughts. He'll tell you how to think. Colossians 3, 2. Set your affections or set your mind, another translation says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So when we set our mind on things above, then we're thinking heavenly thoughts. When we set our minds on the things of the earth, we're thinking the things of, of the earth, and we're doing that. <clears throat> so, Let's look here in Psalms 139, verse 23. Psalms 139, verse 23. Psalms 139, verse 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Let's go to the next verse. And if there be any wicked way in me, Lead me in the way everlasting. Now, let's go back up to the pre previous version, 23. Search me, O God. Search me. What are we saying? What are, what are we saying when we ask God to search us? We're saying that there might be something in me that needs to be discovered. Something that I am not aware of something that is in me that I'm not conscious of. And Lord, so search me, know my heart, try me, know my thoughts. And then God, if there's something wrong with my heart and my thoughts, I want you to lead me in the way everlasting. Now, why did I say that particular scripture? Because the thing about thoughts, we would think that it's just a matter of thinking you know, why don't we just think good things, okay? Let's go to Philippians, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse. <clears throat> Philippians, fourth chapter and the eighth verse. Finally, brethren, what things, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are what? Honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are what? Pure, whatsoever things are what? Lovely, whatsoever things are of what? Of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, do what? Think on these things. Let these things be your thought. Let these things be the things that you meditate upon or the things that you find yourself uh, uh, dealing with so that it can try to change your thought life or your thinking. Now, here's the thing. Why don't we just fix our mind on positive thoughts. Your thoughts generate from your soul. Listen to me. Your thoughts generate from your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotion. We need, according to James 121, the engrafted word, which is able to what? Save our souls. So why don't we just think positive thoughts and and let that just be it. No, we need the Word of God to change the way that we're thinking. If it's just a matter of you thinking positive thoughts and all, then any heathen can do that. Any non-saved person can do that. What God is saying that this is a soul issue and the only way that the soul can be saved is through the engrafted Word of God. Amen? Amen? So now, let's think about this. Now, he told us
to if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, this is God telling us what to think on. But the problem is, it's not that easy just to think this good thoughts. It's not easy for you or the majority of us because most of our thoughts are automatic or beneath our awareness. Most of our thoughts are automatic or beneath our awareness. We have a tendency to associate things. I'll give you an example. Uh, you come up to a, to a house and it's dark. And automatically, this is for everybody, but most, most times people will look at that and fear start get, coming into their hearts because they've associated darkness with burglary, fear, something going bad. You have something like that that you have put in your brain, and why is it that the, the thought of looking at a, a dark house now automatically strikes fear on the inside of you? Because you've made an association. There's that mind-body association. Now, let me give you an example. Um, when Jesus had fasted 40 days, and 40 nights. It was interesting that the devil came to him speaking to him about bread or about food. So let me take you down the road of this is it, or KFC, or Bojangles, <laughs> or Longhorns, or any kind of restaurant when you're hungry. You're sitting down, you haven't eaten in, eh, about mm, almost 24 hours. You're hungry. So I sat down in front of you, this nice plate of fried chicken, golden fried, golden fried. Now, you, you health nuts, y'all don't, don't, don't join in on this because y'all can't follow me, but other people <laughs> who like fried chicken. So I said before you, fried chicken and mashed potatoes with gravy and green beans and candied yams and man, cornbread, <laughs> sweet, tea. sweet tea, what else? Mac and, Mac and cheese, what else? <laughs> collard greens, how could I forget collard greens being from the South? Collard greens, peach cobbler, <laughs> carrot souffle. Now, but think about it. Just the thought of that, particularly if you haven't eaten, the thought of it makes your stomach almost start growling. The taste buds or the saliva starts, you start salivating. Why is that in that all I've given you is just thoughts? That's all I've given you. I hadn't, I hadn't done anything. You hadn't seen no fried chicken. I hadn't set a plate down in front of you. You don't smell the collards. You, nothing. No other sensory perception except just the, the thought of it. And it affects our minds. But see, that's down in our subconscious, but somebody says something, that's why when you're hungry, you go past a, uh, a restaurant and immediately something comes up of, mmm, that's good, mmm, that's good, and you wanna, you wanna go and you wanna get that. Now, let's look at something here. Most of it is in our subconscious, or in other words, we're not aware of what's playing in our minds or in our thought. We're not thinking about what we're thinking. We're not thinking about what we're thinking. Pastor Taff was talking about the apps that run in the background. I don't know if you all remember her, her teaching a couple of weeks ago, but she was talking about the apps that run in the background. And the apps that run in the background are these 
thoughts that are in our head that are subconscious thoughts that we don't tend to pay attention to, but it tends to pop up and have a negative effect on our, in our mind. So we're not even aware that they're running in our subconscious. These subconscious thoughts are draining our batteries. These subconscious thoughts are draining our batteries. Why is it that you can go throughout a day and if you're thinking about things, if you're thinking about worry, if you're thinking about something that is causing anxiety, if you're thinking about stress and any of that, why is it that the thinking drains our bodies? Why is it that the thinking drains our body? Why is it that you can come home and you've been sitting on your tail all day, but you're tired? Because it's draining your body and it's causing you to, uh, it's causing a physical effect on you. Now, let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter, or excuse me, Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the twelfth verse. Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the twelfth verse. Praise God. Praise God. Hebrews 4.12. And it says, For the word of God is quick, is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of what? Soul and spirit, and, is, and the joints and the marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That word discerner, let's look at that. That word discerner means that it is skilled in judging. So the Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of your heart. So what the Word of God does is when thoughts are in your head, when thoughts are, are, are in your mind, it can take it and it can skillfully judge it. The Word of God looks at what's in your mind and it judges it and makes a judgment and say, uh-uh, that's not of me. That needs to go. The Word of God looks at your thought life, search me, O oh God, and know, my, and know my heart, try me, know my thoughts. The Word of God looks at your heart and is a discerner of your thoughts, and it is discerning your thoughts, and it tells you that that thought doesn't belong here. That thought you should not be meditating on. That thought you've given too much attention to, cast it down. Amen. Now, when we do that, what the Word of God is now doing is it's house cleaning. It's going through your mind and it is saying that you've been thinking about your gas bill too long. You've been looking in the mirror and you've been wondering if something is wrong with your health. Go to the doctor. But don't sit there and keep worrying about it. The Word of God says you would, you've been looking at your paycheck and you're wondering how you're going to pay your next bill and you're worrying. Stop that. It is a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. What's in your heart? What are you thinking about? What are you meditating on? What is it that is capturing and taking higher place in God than you are? Now, let's look at something here. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the third verse. 2 Corinthians 10th chapter and the third verse. And we're familiar with this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not what? War after the flesh. Keep on, I'll tell you when to stop. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to, through God to what? The pulling down of strongholds. Now, when we talk about strongholds, the, the literal Greek of that is something that you rely on. The Word of God is strong enough to discern and look at your thoughts and say, you're relying too much on that. You're relying too much on that. You're relying too much on your education. You're relying too much on your pedigree. You're relying too much on hoping that uh, that loan is going to come through. You're relying too much on 
your job. Not, nothing wrong with job. Every, we all got to work. You're relying too much on it. He's saying rely on me. So it has to pull down strongholds. Our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Next verse. Casting down imaginations or images. Remember I was saying how thoughts create images? Casting down imagination or images and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God bringing into captivity. Bringing into captivity. How are you able to capture your thoughts? It was rhetorical. It was rhetorical. <laughs> How are you able to capture your thoughts? First of all, we got to be mindful of the thoughts that are going through our heads. We got to be mindful. We got to start thinking about what we are thinking about. What is it that's occupying your mind? And it occupies your mind so much that it's subconscious that you're not even aware of it. A lot of us go through things and we find ourselves doing stuff almost by heart because we've done it for so long, for so many years, that it takes no thought. It's just automatic. But it is in our thought mind. So therefore, because it's in our thought mind, it continues to determine whether we're going to succeed or not. So God says, I want to give you this promotion. In your thought, because of years of experience, you, you said, well, God, you know, every time I try to do something, I don't really succeed in it. Every time, you know, I tried this before and I, it didn't work. Or, you know, God, I, I, I applied for that job and then they didn't give me. God says, cast that down. I want to prosper you. So now we get to this point to where the weapons of our warfare are not, uh, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. He's pulling down what is it that's been in your subconscious for so long that you have now relied upon for year after year after year after year. In other words, God's changing our thinking. God's changing our thinking. He said, what have you been thinking? How is it that you've had wrong thinking for years and years and years and years? I understand how you have wrong thinking for years and years and years because nobody came and told you it was wrong. Before I got born again, there were a lot of things that I was doing that I didn't know was wrong. I ain't going to share them with you. <laughs> Just use your imagination, amen? <laughs> so we're talking about imagination. But even after I got born again, there were some things that I didn't know was wrong that I was still doing until somebody came and challenged my thinking. And they said, no, you're not supposed to think that way. I'll give you an example, grace. Up until 12 years ago, most of us were following the law. And we thought that that was the right way to go. We've learned that for years. We've learned that thinking for years. And God says, I have a higher way to think. Let me come and let me change your way of thinking. Or let me change your thoughts when it comes to me and you think that I'm going to strike you down because you sin. No, uh-uh. Come into a greater understanding. So now, he says, bring into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. Now, let's get into something here because I want to give you some practical things of how you can master your thought life here. Number one, write this down. Stock up on the Word of God. Now, I know that's simple, but stock up on the Word of God. Study it. Meditate on it. Read it. Say it out loud. Think about it. Pull out scriptures when you're on your lunch break. Start reading scripture before you go to work in the morning. When you go to bed at night, read, 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 read. When I first got born again, that's all I was doing was reading, reading, reading the Word of God, reading the Word of God, reading the Word of God. Re that's all I was doing, reading the Word of God, reading the Word of God. And it was just such that when I would be on my lunch break, here I am, a 19, 20-year-old person, 
You're supposed to be out chasing young girls and all that stuff. Praise God. I didn't. You know, thank God. I got born again. But I was reading my Bible at lunchtime. I had my head buried down in that word. And my prayer was this, Father, as I read your word, etch it in my spirit. I didn't say write it in my spirit. I said etch it in there that it can't be erased. Etch it in my spirit. And so I have, I, all I was doing was stocking my shelf. I was stocking my shelf, stocking my shelf. As I was reading, that's all I'm doing. I'm stocking the shelves, stocking the shelves. I'm stocking the shelves, stocking the shelves. And then when I found myself in life, the Holy Spirit said, pull that down. Yeah. You remember when you spent time with me and you read that? Pull that down. So stock up on the Word of God. Get it in your spirit. Yeah. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Then it says in Psalms 1-2, it says to meditate, but, in, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Now, we know we're not talking about the law of Moses anymore. We're talking about God's word. In his word does he meditate day and night. Psalms 119, verse 11. All of this is up on the stock up on the word of God. Stock up on the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Get it in your heart. Get it in your heart. You're stocking it on those shelves that I might not sin against thee. Praise God. Number two, judge your thoughts daily. Judge your thoughts daily. Do this hourly and by the minute if you have to. But judge your thoughts daily. Now, I'm not telling people to go and live in a monastery. I'm not telling you to go and, and bury yourself in a closet and not have any, not even to interact in the world. I'm not telling you that. I'm not telling you to look at certain movies. I'm not telling you to listen to certain songs. I, that ain't my job. That's the Holy Ghost job. I ain't trying to do that. But what I am telling you is sometimes when I'm watching certain things and I see it, I judge it immediately before it tries to get in my head. That house got on fire. That ain't going to happen to me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God gives this angel's charge over me and protect me. That ain't going to happen to me. Oh, well, these people are homeless. That ain't going to happen to me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. That ain't going to happen to me. See, I'm judging my thoughts. So these thoughts try to get in my head. Before I let them come in my head and, and take a stronghold, I judge it. I judge it. So I go throughout life. I might be exposed to a whole bunch of stuff. You know, I'm, I'm out witnessing to something, and the people I'm around, they're cussing like sailors. Oh, my God, I'm saved. I can't be around cussing. Ugh, man, please. <laughs> and neither am I going to go up to them and start trying to condemn them about them cussing. That's what they do. It ain't hurting my spirit. I'm stronger than that. I can deal with people cussing. Hey, Amen. I used to. You did, too. <laughs> But I judge the thoughts that I'm, I'm subjected to, and I say, nope, you're not, you're, you're not getting in. There's a wall of defense here, and that wall of defense is the Word of God, which is quick and is able to discern. It's, it's able to judge skillfully and to say, no, we're not letting that in. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Now, why did I start off with stock up on the Word of God? Because you've got to have the Word of God to stop it. Amen? Amen? Number three. Set your mind. Let's go to Romans, the um, eighth chapter, fifth and sixth verse. And for, uh, for judging your thoughts daily, that's 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5, where you, you judge, you, you cast down those thoughts. Anything that's not of God, you cast it down. You bring it unto the obedience of God's word. Number three, set your mind. Romans 5, 8 through 6. For they that are after the flesh, you think about things of the flesh. 
Your thoughts are on things of the flesh. So if your thoughts are on things of the flesh, you're going to do things of the flesh. But they that are of the spirit, their minds are on the things of the spirit. How do we know what the spirit is? By learning the word of God. So when we know what the word of God says, that's where our mind goes to. For to be carnally minded is death, or to have thoughts that think on the world, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, when we look at this, you set your mind on the things of God. Now, setting your mind on the things of God builds a stronghold. So now I'm talking about stronghold in the positive sense, because remember I said stronghold is that which you rely upon. So now when you, when you set your mind on the things of God, you're building a stronghold. Now when things come against it, you're consciously, you're aware, you says that is not God, stop it. You set your mind, you set your mind, you set your mind, and then when those things come, you automatically, it's almost like it's bouncing against a force shield, it's bouncing against a force shield, and it's not penetrating. In other words, your mind becomes impenetrable, praise God. As you continue to set your mind, your stronghold becomes impenetrable. Last one today. <clears throat> Speak the word daily and as needed. I like what the analogy that Pastor gave, uh, uh, it, one of, I guess, somebody, he had gotten it from someone, but they were talking about how um, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can't stop him from making a nest. You can't stop all the thoughts that go through your head, okay? Don't try to do that. Don't try to exhaust yourself with that, okay? Every thought, a lot of thoughts, just let them just keep going, going by, okay? Um, if I see a six, seven man with a four foot woman, that ain't my business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't even let my thoughts go there. How, how did they get together? Man, I want, you know what? None of my business, move on. A lot of the stuff that goes through your mind, move on. So the birds can fly over your head, but don't let them nest there. You let them nest there when you start meditating on that stuff and you start thinking, that ain't even none of your business, man. Let it go. Just keep it moving. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so now what, you have, what we have to do is we got to make sure that when something does come that now tries to get in and cause worry. Use this analogy again. Light bill due. Um, it's due Monday. Today is Wednesday. Lord, I've done all that you told me to do. I'm employed, I work, uh, I take care of my responsibilities, I do everything that you told me to do. Now, that bill is trying to speak to you and trying to establish a thought of worry in your head. You now have to speak back to the bill. Bill, you ain't gonna worry me, baby. <laughs> My aunt used to say that, man, I used to love it. She used to say, you ain't gonna worry me, baby. And I'd be like, yeah, I like that. And then, but Bill, you ain't going to worry me because my God says that he'll supply all of my needs according to his riches and his glory. My God says that he's able to make all grace abound towards me, that me always having all things, all sufficiency may abound unto what? Every good work. So, Bill... In the name of Jesus, I call you paid. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. That's how you deal with that thing. Now, how's God going to do it? I don't know. That's why we rely on him. That's why we trust him. That's why we depend on him. That's why he's God. As Pastor Anthony was saying this morning, either we believe God or we don't. So I can let the thoughts get in my head. I can let the thoughts now trickle down into my spirit man and start affecting my spirit man. And I can let that thought now start causing my physical body to uh, my heart rate increases, uh, also starts to form uh, headaches come about all because of the thought of that bill not being paid. I cast that thought down with the word of God, which says my God's going to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Now, how do we deal with thoughts? With words. You got to speak to your thoughts. I will use this last example, and then we're going to get ready to close out. You all remember when Pastor gave the example, and we're going to do it tonight because it will be a forever example because it's so good. <laughs> when thoughts are in your head, you get rid of those thoughts by speaking out. So once again, count to 10 in your head. Now say your name. What happened to the thoughts? It stopped because it was interrupted by you speaking. Now, we're not just speaking anything because what we want to do is we want to speak the word of God and cause those thoughts now to flee. Not to just stop and then start back. Now, something about not just us speaking, that, that physiologically that does interrupt a thought. But when you speak the word of God, now it captures that thought. It's one thing to interrupt the thought temporarily. It's another thing to capture the thought and it's captured where it's not going to come back on you. So now when that thought comes in your mind, you speak the word of God and 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, capturing, bringing every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ comes into place. You, not, you haven't temporarily suspended that thing. You now have captured it and now you are the victor and not the victim. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, if you get something out of it, praise God. We got to learn to master this thought life because in doing so, we're going to find that we will, our victories will come more easily. Now, this is not going to happen overnight. This is not going to happen, you know, just, just in a little while. We got to train ourselves to think on the Word of God. We got to go in and we got to clean out all the garbage. We got to clean out all the garbage and start replacing it with the Word of God. And that's going to take time. You got to become sensitive to now thinking about what the Word of God says in your particular situation. Don't stomp your toe and curse. Stomp your toe and say, bless God. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Come on up here. Fly. Amen. 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 Everybody repeat this. Change your thoughts. Change your life. Amen. Amazing word. Change your thoughts, change your life. It's that simple. That simple, step by step. And the church said amen. 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 So if you receive something amazing tonight, it is now time for us to complete our worship. So if you're in this building, of course, ushers, they have their offering envelopes. You can raise your hand and simply get one. Or, of course, we do have a few different ways that you can give. You can simply text the word world changers. 
and leave a space for the amount and text it to 74483. You can also call 1-866-477-7683. You can mail in your gifts to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349, or of course online at worldchangers.org, creflodollarministries.org, or of course being here in the building, you can simply scan the QR code that's behind my head. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is so practical. He makes it so simple that we, we can't even, we can't mess this up. Change your thoughts, change your life. It's that simple. And fight them thoughts with words. Amen. Amen. Awesome word. I'm so excited to, to let this play back over, man. Back to back, Pastor Taffy, Pastor Anthony, Pastor Ken. It just don't stop. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, now that everyone has had an opportunity to give, we're going to go ahead and pray over the offering. So, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we get to give. We get to complete our worship, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this, this seed that we're sowing. We just pray and declare that it will go and grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, of course, you are free to collect. Now, of course, I do not want to uh, allow this moment to pass by without being sure to extend the opportunity for those who have not received Jesus into their lives. So if you're in this building or, of course, whether you're online watching and you're like, ah, I need to change my thoughts. I've been battling thoughts with thoughts. I'm trying to fully understand and grasp this. Well, this free gift of Jesus wanting to come into your life is it's here. Amen. And this opportunity is here right now. So if you don't know Jesus, I want you to simply say this prayer after me. Say, Lord God, I realize and admit that I am a sinner. And right now I ask you to come into my heart, to cleanse me, change me, and make me new. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And by faith, I declare that I am saved. So simple. Amen. So give it up for those that prayed their prayer for the first time. Online, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, we celebrate you. We welcome you into the family. And if you prayed that prayer of salvation with me today, I want you to simply text the word, I'm saved. That's one word, because that's, what, we, that's what, what it is. I'm saved. Text, I'm saved, the 51555. You will provide your name and your email address, and we'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Amen. Y'all give it up one more time for those who prayed the prayer for the first time. My goodness, God is so good. God, and all the time, God is good. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up. We can go, I can get you all out of here tonight. Ah, oh, man. And if you receive Christ for the first time tonight and you also may have needed special prayer, we do have uh, prayer counselors that's here in the building. So if you need a uh, special prayer for anything, just simply come down to the altar and we will take care of that as well. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, we just thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. Right now, Lord, I speak a blessing over each and every person right now. I thank you, Lord God, that the words that were received this evening, Father, that it will not return into you void, but it will accomplish that to which you ascended to do. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to change our thoughts. So we stack our thoughts up with your word, Father, and we declare right now in the name of Jesus that we are different, we are changed, we are whole, we are complete in you. We declare by faith right now, Father, and now unto him who is able to present you faultless and to keep you from falling for him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us be blessed be bold be unashamed and continue to represent him well you all have an amazing evening Yeah.